previously on Twitch Plays D&D. The party found themselves in the middle of a violent war being fought between two nations. They had joined the side of Unther, helping them reclaim their lost homelands from the Tymanther Dragonborn. Roland was tasked with leading a small team consisting of Clement, Cheek, and Delphini to capture the enemy commander Dofel Zoras. They asked a comrade, Alatar the Wizard, to teleport them to the enemy's camp, but the spell only took them partway there. They traveled through the thick oak forest and eventually found themselves attacked by the enemy. While distracting and flanking their opponents, soon they found that the forest was raining with fire from above distant trebuchet attacks, which sadly crushed their friend Alatar. Chasing deeper into the forest, soon they found the mists around them thickening and noticed the trees to bear fewer leaves. Soon they spotted two children on a road who were terrified of a, a monster in their home, pleading with them to save their baby brother and family. Finding themselves lost and in great need of rest, they decided to help, perhaps to take refuge in the house and then search more for a way home afterwards. Party, you smashed part of a window and climbed <laughs> through, entering into a kitchen. The party heard. All of you hear a low moan come from the other room as you hear this. What do you do? I sense ill omens. Oh no! Did you hear Is that? Someone else hungry. <laughs> Did you hear that? Do you Am think I it's the monster, the parent? I think it was Clement's stomach. It never, never did that before, so, um, can I go to the window? Are the kids still in the front of the house? Yeah, so Clement, you walk over to the window while the group makes their way towards the door, and you peer out, and you see that the mists have thickened even more around you. For a second, you think you glimpse two shadowy figures through the mist, uh, but moments later, that that disappears, and, and you're not even sure exactly what you saw, but right now, you don't see the two children. I'll just stuff some bread in my mouth and... All right, are we heading uh, forward? Excellent, so Cheek, you're with your nose forward, you push this wooden door open as it gives a little like And what you see in there, you see, you see yes. a glimpse into a very spacious dining room. And in the center of this room, you see this large wood carved table. And on top of it, there's an assortment of food. For a split second, the, the, the house looked pristine clean. Um, but as you blink your eyes to get a, to almost focus, you clearly see that there's a layer of dust on everything. Oh, I don't like this at all. I, this is disgusting. Yeah, I know. Just a waste of good food, right? Uh, having noticed the apparition of cleanliness, I, I cast Detect Magic to see if I can notice anything interesting. Can I look to the dining room and see, are there any changes in there? You peer into the dining room, it is still the same room with this large table cluttered with, with old molded food. One more thing catches Clement's eyes as, as he just opens the door a few more inches. You see a body laying face forward on the table and you're not sure if that was there before um, or if you opening the door gave you more visibility. Oi, oi, there's, there's a body on the table. So what? What you can now see fully is the entire table on the far right of this room. So this would be the back of the house from the entrance. And you do see that body laying there face forward on the table. Um, I, I almost forgot about you. You had your entire spell and, and you just turned back to that. And just you say that you utter the final incantations. You do sense a light magical presence in, in the house in general. And in particular, there's a, pre a strong presence of magic from, from that body itself. Can I tell if the body's dead? Um, you're, you don't see any breathing. I'd like to go around and cautiously look at its face. So you, as, you, as all of you move further into the dining room, Cheek, you do go around and, and right now his face is smashed into a, a plate of food that's also well um, decayed. And so you're not able to see that quite, but Roland, I believe that you step forward. I kind of put my arm up uh, to the side and keep everybody behind me. And I say, all right, Delphini at the ready. Uh, mm. Everybody be prepared. I don't, uh, there's something, there's something odd about this body. 
I need to see. And as as I as I approach, I just quickly snatch out, grab it by the grab it by the hair, pull the head back to to reveal whatever I may reveal. Uh, hopefully, the food didn't stick to his face so much that I can't tell what I'm looking at. You you pull his hair back, and and you get a look at his face as the food does kind of crustily crumble off as it's well dried out and for a split second you think that it's Daniel Radcliffe but <laughs> it, but it's not uh, you, you look Radcliffe in plan. and uh, within a, a foot and a half away from you you're peering into your own face but the life has been drained out of it as you see now getting a better look at the body itself it's wearing um, cl- not your exact clothes but clothes that you've worn in, in the past uh, and again the eyes uh, are, are completely lifeless as, as, as no life breathes out of this body and you're glancing just a second more as the, as the group makes their way closer to you and soon it crumbles to ashes onto the table and on the ground around you did you see the same thing as me? that was so gross I'm ready to go. We yeah, could just leave. I'm not sure what I saw. I say we, we grab the baby and get out. Yeah, we, we just need to get the kid. This is gross. Yeah. Um, is there even a baby? Because I feel like we're all seeing a lot of different things, and I'm usually the one that sees all of these things, but you're seeing these things too. So I'm worried that something is not right with this house. Let's split mm. up. No. no. What? When we no. do this, no. we're just no. going to <laughs> I mean, we you know do what have, I mean? we do have cheek in, in wolf form. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're both Scooby and Shaggy at the same time. <laughs> the druggy dog. Perfect. As you walk up, a cold draft can be felt coming down from the steps as you approach. You have some doorways that, that you guys didn't look at that much, but you didn't need to because they actually were pretty collapsed in on themselves and you just see this light emanating from the rooms that that seem to be almost collapsed in on themselves in there yeah i'd like to really listen in it is eerily quiet in the floor that you're on right now right now you hear uh, the house echo with the hollow Mm -hmm. sounds of your footsteps on this on this marble staircase as you work your way up and other than that you hear maybe a slight wind hitting against the side of the house and just this ever ever so slight creaking of wood upstairs but you're not hearing any voices or any clear movement yeah i why do i not hear any baby you do not no whining no nothing you do not guys i'm going to just i'm going to just say this now i think we're walking into a trap you would think a kid would cry yeah. by now, huh? Yeah, true. And um, uh, you know, I took a look at the uh, at the kid Thorn. Was it his name? And um, seemed pretty truthful, I say. Lemon, did you say that the children were still outside? Uh, I, I saw them through the mist, but you know, uh, the mist is getting thicker. So. Was it wise for us to leave the children outside? What else? I mean, if they would, they wouldn't come inside. I didn't want to come in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at this point, we're already so far up here. We might as well just check to make sure if there's a kid up there or not. And then if we don't see a kid, we just jet. We just get out of here. This place is creepy. Uh, You know, uh, considering Um... how well my plans have gone, uh, I say maybe we go with Delphini's. um, (laughs) Because nothing I've done has gone particularly well. You, As you ascend, you are met with a large and lengthy hallway that that takes up this entire second floor as as you approach it. Immediately next to you is a wood-framed portrait of a family. You can make out Ah. two smiling children, the the ones that you've met already. uh, You recognize them. A father with a swaddled baby in his arms and a mother who appears to be the only one not smiling in in this portrait. The east and west halls of this hallway are covered with standing suits of armor, each clutching a spear and equipped with a visor helm that's shaped like a wolf's head. In between the suits, there are doors carved with dancing uh, children on them, and you count four doors in total in this hallway. For now, uh, how far apart are these four kid doors? They're about, um, you would say, 10, 14 feet away from from each other. And they're, they're all roughly equidistant? Yes. 
So I, I was I was thinking we'd just go full SWAT team on these, each take a door, <laughs> bust through, and then whoever sees danger would just yelp and say, Oi, come over here. Um, okay. you know, like then, then we could just we could just get get it done. Uh, you know, get this done, find the baby, rush in, grab it, run down the stairs, uh, you know, see if we can find Rose and Thorn, hand them the baby, and then we can maybe take on the monster as well. I mean, I'm never against a good just confrontation, so if that's what we want to do, we can do that. Let's do it. Sounds fun for me, and it sounds fun for whoever's telling the story. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, and yeah. and I, I look to my left and to my right, and I say, we each take one door, preparing for battle soon. Our fate will be sealed. So one, two, three. Roland and and Delphini, each of you kick your doors open as they as they break under your weight, um, and they fall down to the ground. Dust is kicked up. Cheek, you and and Clement. Um, both give a go at, at your doors, and you find that both of them uh, don't budge. Uh, it just with either it was the weight of, of the movement or perhaps the door itself. Clement, in particular, yours felt like it was maybe blocked by something. Roland, you see this uh, elegantly designed bedroom with an adjoining nursery. Uh, and Delphini, you see uh, what appears to be a, a master bedroom of sorts. Um, I would like to step in to explore. I will rush right behind her if I see her enter you hear just a few almost like scratchings on wood but beyond that nothing really got your attention as you step in and Clement you follow behind her both of you now see you see more of the interior of this room the furnishings include this four poster bed with embroidered curtains and this tattered gossamer veil hanging down. Uh, lastly, there's a door facing the foot of the bed that has a full length mirror mounted on it. So you step in and as you're glancing at this picture, you just, you, not too much of it jumps out at you, but you very much see the resemblance of the father and the mother figures from, from the other one. Um, in, in this picture, the, the mother seems to be smiling a, a little bit more than she was in, in the other one. And as you're staring at this, you hear a light whimpering coming from underneath the bed in there. Delphine, you peer out the window and you don't see the two children. Uh, you just see the thick mists all around you. Clement, you peer underneath the bed and what you see is this. You see this small pug, this this old pug, staring at you. From what you see, it's inc it's pretty thin and, and emaciated. It bears its teeth at you with a low growl, uh, and next to it lays some rotting and, and molded uh, moldy food scraps that you think probably came from the dining room. I can speak to animals. I'm still in the hall. I'm still I'm still trying to headbutt my way into my door. <laughs> There is no oh, lucky like there's, there's an animal here. There's what? Yeah, there's an animal here. What, what kind of animal are you talking about? What's under there? And I kind of lean down to check it out as well. It's a dog, but oh. uh, I think we should just leave it. You know, we should go find a baby. I love dogs, and that's why I've stuck with Cheek for this long. So uh, I run over there, <laughs> and, uh, and and just just you know, from the door, I just I just dive under my stomach, just trying to make like a sliding. It look, you know, I'm just so enamored by dogs. So uh, I just kind of like dive under my stomach and kind of slide up to the edge of the bed. Roland, you you dive in as now all four of you are in there, and Cheek, you can well see under the bed at your height. Yeah, uh, I've I've wiggled my way under the bed. And as you get in there, and and the dog uh, slowly starts approaching you, Cheek, as it just kind of nuzzles its way forward ever so slightly. I would like to cast Animal Friendship. Tell me a little bit about what you do to to show some friendship. So I, I nuzzle forward, and I give it a little, like, in its face. And then I, I put my, my paws down, and then face just immediately down. The dog seems to very slowly kind of worm crawl its way towards you, very cautiously, um, but eventually gets right up to you and, and seems to be nuzzling the side of your head. Can I cast Speak with Animal as well? I would take 10 minutes. Shake, do you think the dog would know 
the baby? Like, would I recognize a baby? I think oh. that maybe this dog has been here a long time because it has moldy scraps. So maybe yeah. it seems it's seen something. It seems pretty freaked out. I it probably saw the monster. At the very least, you know, maybe it could lead us in the right direction. Uh, Roland, what did you find? So, um, so I saw a nursery. Uh, we should definitely head that way. But uh, you're right. The dog, I believe, would be uh, a boon to us. So uh, then I, I take a blanket uh, from the bed and uh, and I slowly approach as it's it's got this kind of affection with cheek. And I, I slowly, slowly wrap it up and I say, Woof, woof, little dog. You seem scared now, small puppy, but we'll keep you safe. I You're love it so much. Oh, it, it will get old, but... Uh, no, it will not. <laughs> it will not, in fact. I like how I, I don't even count it anymore. I just assume he's he's somehow done it. You see that this dog is, is, is quite friendly with you all now, and you think that's probably to, to the help of, of Cheek. And you notice that the dog is wearing a little collar, and that reads, it says, Poggers on it. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I lean down to the now blanket-wrapped pug, and, uh, and I say, Oh, little Poggers, um, w- would you like to help us find your, your family? He actually turns to you and gives just the tiniest little roof. That's a yes, if I ever heard one. Um, so but you are going to regret giving us this dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to let him go. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm literally it's, it's giddy right now. We're <laughs> laughing this dog. <laughs> I, it would be a real shame if something were to happen to him. So, um, so with that, I, I say, all right, let, let's bring him over here. I saw a nursery, and uh, perhaps, perhaps uh, um, he can help us uh, find find the the little potato that's been left there. And you walk in. All of you now see this large bed. Um, two end tables, a a wardrobe. The nursery there contains a crib that you see covered with a hanging black shroud. And at that moment, you actually gaze your side, uh, your gaze moves to the leftmost corner where you see a a thin woman there with her back turned turned to you. She's wearing a long dress that resembles what a nursemaid would wear. And you can hear her very, very quietly weeping. Oh my god, we finally found someone. Uh, oh, you there. Hello? Uh, oh, hello. I, I didn't I didn't see you there. I'm so so sorry. As she turns around, what you guys see is this this young woman, somewhat thin, and she turns to you uh, and you see this almost light red glow to her face that with the blink of a few more eyes slowly begins to fade as you see these splotchy blood stains start to to fill her face, you see bruising start to appear, uh, and soon you see her, her, her form show entirely as, as, her, as even the, the, her clothes seem to have changed in front of you as they're shredded, covered in nope. blood now with her eyes that seem to have been clawed out and her nope, mouth nope, nope. cut from left to right. Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry. Did I? Is is there something wrong here? Um, can I help you? Is there a reason why you're in here? And if you could, please, I'm. I still have to put the baby down. I just got him to sleep. So if you could just, please, be a little bit quiet. It was so hard to get to take care of that. So. I'm sorry. Did the uh, did the uh, yeah. bursting through the door <laughs> disturb the baby? Uh, I, hope, so. I, hope, I, hope, I hope it didn't. Like it was such a chore to put him to sleep. So. If you could so, just please be careful. As I, as you... I slowly back up, I, I say, who, who are you? What's, what's your name? Oh, I, that was so rude of me to not introduce myself. Uh, my name is Squiggle Dumont, uh, but people call me Squiggles. Are you aware that you are very, very injured? Are you okay? I'm sorry? Um, um, uh, can I tell if this is an illusion or something? Because you don't look all right. Go and look in the mirror right there. And I kind of point to the full length mirror that's that's hanging on the wall. And she kind of walks forward and looks at herself and doesn't really, like, kind of touches her face a little bit. She's like, oh, this is odd. I don't quite remember this happening. 
While she goes to the mirror and back, can I look in the crib? Is there a baby there? There is. And, and as you approach um, this the, the crib, you, you get a better look. And it, it is this um, small crib of the image that you're seeing in here. But the one, one difference is there is a black shroud hanging. Um, you approach forward, and you do see that what looks like the shape of, uh, of a small baby through that, that black shroud in, in the middle of the crib. Um, and as you approach Roland, you, you see this crib, and once again, your, your scars seem to flare up as these voices flood into your mind again, urging you to, to, to take action here uh, uh, regarding the crib. Who, who are you? Um, uh, do, what, what, who is this baby? And do you know the kids that live here? I should hope I know the children that live here. I was hired by the family to be their to be their nurse, so I know the children fairly well, as well as the family. The parents have left for a few days now. Um, I was tasked to stay here and take care of the children while they were away. What are the children's names again? Uh, remind me. Refresh my memory. Uh, Rose uh, and Thorn, and the littlest one is Walter. I want to kind of uh, get in between uh, uh, Squiggles and the baby. And Roland, you did... You- did peer at her looking for any strange mannerisms or odd things in her story she seems to be fully genuine she's telling she seems to be telling the truth or at least what that truth is to her it's still hard to look past um the strange parts of her story for example her looking in the mirror and being slightly confused of what was going on but beyond that you you think she's telling the truth so, so you don't remember being injured. You don't remember this happening. I, it's a pretty major thing to happen and not notice. I suppose, but you know, some details have. Uh, I feel like a few details have slipped my mind. I was so involved with taking care of the, uh, the the children that sometimes I don't quite remember everything. I uh, like losing your eyes, for example. I have no recollection of them being plucked from my skull. I, I hold up some fingers and I say, uh, "Excuse me." Squiggles, uh, how, how many fingers am I holding up? Uh, I believe four. And and just at that moment, Cheek, you you finish your incantation, and and you find yourself having the ability to now speak with Poggers. That's me, Mister Poggart. Um, but what's going on here? In, uh, uh, you can. You can hear me now. Well, obviously I can hear you because I am a wolf, so obviously I can speak what you speak, so. It, it does not work like that. I, I'm a, I'm a dog. You're a bigger dog. What's going on here, Poggers? Is she dead? Who, who is she? She's lady who uh, um, takes care of house. Why are her eyes plucked out? I, I, I don't see much around here um, and he quickly actually kind of gets sees the sight of her and, and and actually scurries behind you it looks scared as if the first time seeing her like this so, and, and yes? when when we save this baby we can take you uh, yes please I, uh, actually leave the house y- y- yes i'm i'm gonna turn to uh squiggles and can I try for like a, a persuasion kind of deal and just tell her like, I clearly you don't know what's going on in the house, uh, but there seems to be some crazy nonsense going on in here. I mean, clearly you're deeply injured. I would highly suggest that we get the kids, get the hell out of here. Roland pulls back that black shroud and you do see once again, this, this baby size bundle that's tapped up, uh, wrapped up pretty tightly. You don't see the baby itself. You just kind of see this bundling of blue cloth. Well, I, I suppose if you you think that would be best to to take the children with you, um, there have the misses the, the misses of the house. She has been acting a little peculiar. I've not been able to bring it up to the master of the house recently. She has been out of out of sorts for a while. Um, yeah. Puggers, where are the master and the lady of this house? And he seems to give a a frantic look around the room, looking down the hallway, uh, scratches the back of his neck, and turns back to you to to give an answer, but actually sneezes. (laughs) It gives a little sneeze um, and kind of tumbles the blanket off his head and then soon says, What did you ask of me? (laughs) No! (laughs) Speak now, mortal. And of course, only Cheek can hear this. I do not like my time wasted. 
um, rolling, 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 rolling. Um, 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 something is not right with this dog. I think I'm hearing things, but not the things that I normally hear. I'm hearing something different now. Different how? Uh, what, I mean, um, what, what's wrong? Well, before, like an old man. And now he's like a demon. Um, Puggers, where is the lady and the, the master again? The humans of this house? I care not for them. I have no idea where they are at. But why um, are you here? And and you roll in and the rest of the group, so the dog actually chases its tail for a second and sits down all cute with its eyes looking at you. Look, Cheek, nothing is happening. Look, the, the, the dog is just being a dog. I mean, why don't you chase your tail as well? Um, Just just keep it distracted. Play Roland, nice. Roland, and... Roland, Roland, listen, 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 Roland. What? Roland, Roland. There's what? something wrong with this dog. I, I know that this isn't the time to play the the I told you so card, but um, this sort of thing has happened before. Everything has turned out fine. We're here yes, now. I know. I, I'm sorry. This is something that you'll have to deal with. Uh, th this is this is your thing. You're the animal. You speak to them. Um, I'm human. I speak to humans. I should go deal with the humans, right? I uh, want to uh, un unwrap the baby and and see if it's if, if it's asleep cheek um you turn back to the to poggers one last time and and he says do not waste my time again and you see a, a, a sneeze as uh as the dog seems to kind of blink uh and and go back at actually chasing its tail a little bit at this point your the the, the spell that you've casted has worn off as i see this child swaddled head to toe um, I, I real, but I, I saw that it was moving earlier. So, um, so I go for the side that I see, um, uh, that I would believe would be the head. Uh, hopefully, the the larger of the two ends of this, um, <clears throat> and uh, and I, I try, I try just slowly, slowly trying to remove things um, to maybe expose the face of the child. You you do just that gently un unwrapping this this light blue blanket, and as you slowly unfurl this this tight cocoon as you called it, um, you open it up and soon it almost drops on its own weight. What looked like it was filled before kind of falls in on itself, and as you just get into the inner wrappings, uh, you see nothing in there but a light blue wrapping, and as each of you with focus on that, you look around and you notice that Squig is gone. I think something is wrong. Once again, the golden senses are telling me something's wrong with the house because this little dog, Poggers, he yeah. didn't have his voice. What do you mean? It was like a big scary demon. I mean, what's the deal with the, with the kid? That's a really quiet kid. Let's go. We have it. Let's go. The no, kid, there is the no kid. kid. Is is not there anymore? Uh, do do I see Ash? Or give me an investigation check as you're kind of looking at the details of the crib in general. I think so far in this game, I've only oh, I've only oh, rolled. Oh. Hey! As he says it. <laughs> yeah. So looking in in there, you do see light gray black ash that just is slightly coated part of the of this blanket in here. I appreciate the flair. However, no baby. Let's get the f out of here. Let's get the f out of here. And it says this moment baby. you walk out of this room, I assume back to the hallway and you start hearing no no, a light footsteps coming from one of the other doors. All right. So gotcha. I will okay. I will uh, say Zvutu plamia and uh, prepare a sacred flame just to make sure if it's anything that looks uh, suspicious, I will burn it. I'm gonna scruff him like I did before, but now I'm scruffing him by his actual scruff. You still want to take the dog, even though you you hear demonic voices? I mean, I trust Roland on this one. He says he says this happens all the time, so I <laughs> I'm going to trust Roland, right, Roland? Pretty much this exact same thing happened uh, happened over in uh, in the Thorin Wood. Just leave him. No, I'm, we're not bringing any demons here with us. I'll, I'll tell you that. This is not outside of the realm of possibility with uh, with Cheek. She's she's very useful when she's in her own um, idiom, shall we say. And Roland, as you and Cheek are, are arguing and you start to slightly raise your voice at, <laughs> no! at her. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, what is going on here? <laughs> us, the dice have turned in our favor. 
a slight um, <laughs> magical energy pulses from from Roland as he's in the heat of this argument. These roots actually make their way out of you, Roland, and, and start growing into the floorboards of the of that current room that you were in, and they some even curl up the walls. So right now, this area has become difficult terrain. It's just a little tougher to walk through. So I, I look at Delphine and I go, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out. Uh, you know, it's uh, this this has never happened. Is this your thing? I don't feel very magic-y. I, I, I have no clue what's happening here. This house. Uh, it sounds like two sets of, of little feet walking around uh, in this room. Um, beyond that, you don't, you don't hear anything else. I don't know if we're going to act on it, but it does sound like there might be some kids in here. Or we could just get the fuck out of here. We I'm not against it. that. And she swings the door open. And yeah. in there you see this room that contains a, a bricked up window and a dollhouse that looks like from the outside that you can see of it, a perfect, perfect replica of the dreary edifice in which you stand. And your gaze soon moves to the middle of the floor where you see two small skeletons wearing tattered but familiar clothing. The smaller of the two like cradles, a, a stuffed doll that you also recognize. Zoinks the scoob. <laughs> the, I believe that, that that is the technical term for the situation that we are in. Yeah, so based on Delphine and Clement, what both of you are thinking, from what you see of the, the similar clothes, and, and Cheek, from what you smell, even the smell is reminiscent of the two children that you met before. Mm. You hear those slight footsteps once again, and from the corner of the room emerge two figures. And you see Rose and Thorn, but this time they emit a a bluish white glow. And I go, Thorn, what the f is going on here? <laughs> Sorry, who are you? We've never seen you before. What, what are you doing in our rooms? Uh, we we just saw you outside. Um, you you would you told us that something was happening in here. You asked us to save your family. Uh, what what is happening? Who are you? It must be the house. Wants people to come, not to leave. I, I'm still Thorn. It still rose, but, well, he died. We're still here. We're always here. Is there a monster in the house, or not? We and remember that seems to be what, what happened to us. Um, our mother did lock us here, protect us from the monster in the basement. Um, and I guess it got her. No oh one came God. back. We stayed here. We starved. How long ago was this? Time is strange. Can you help us get out of here? It's... I don't know what the house wants. We've been here since. Everything started with the basement. Maybe it can end there too. I would like to change out of wild shape and collect their bones. Yes, you you can You change out now from your wolf to your orc, your half-orc form. And quite easily, you're able to swaddle up these these bones and, and even some of the clothes in there into a neat pile that you can carry yes, with and you. I'd like to, yeah, I want to tie them up very neatly and put them into one of my, like, sling them on me so that I can take them with me and bury them and yeah. bless them. Can you can you show me a dollhouse? Um, as you can now see in inside the interior of, of the house, seeing uh, the rooms that you walked through. From the dollhouse you see itself, you don't you don't see a basement. It, it ends on the desk, like the, the ground of the floor is on the desk of... Yeah. You said there is a monster in the basement. Where is your basement? I, I believe there was a secret door of some sort. Um, maybe, maybe in the attic? Um, and I can't quite remember how my father went to great deals to secure access there. Um, Delphine, at this point, as he mentions that, you're, you've been still staring in the dollhouse. And you see now, at, at the top of this dollhouse, what kind of eluded your view a little bit before, um, seems to be a small ladder that that can be pulled down in the, in the dollhouse that connects with the second floor and does lead to a small basement up there. No, I think so, that makes sense. Uh, look, at, look at the replica. They seem to have, like, a drop ladder down into the basement. So, tell me... What what exactly happened on, as you put it, that night? My parents, especially, well, my mother, really. I, I, I don't remember what my father was doing that night. Um, she seemed agitated. Um, she locked us in 
the room here and she said something about a monster in the basement. I heard screams after a little while, not, not straight away, but then everything went quiet. Uh, days went by. We clawed at the door, we, we, we knocked, we, we screamed. And what, what of your brother, Walter? The last I know is that she took him into the basement. If we're looking at the dollhouse, if we want to get up to the attic, it's down that way. All right, that's it. We're burning it down. I, with this, I, I grab, I grab at my face and and I and I cover up the scars again. Yes, indeed. And and uh, uh, and and I go, oh, dear lord. Um, but look, uh, you know, it seems it seems that our best bet is just to leave as quickly as possible. We are not leaving until we figure out what's wrong with this house. Uh, the, the problem is that it's still standing at this point. I see dead kids. I see a dog that you say is speaking demonic things to you. Um, there, there's there's nothing left here except our lives that we can save at this point. And, well, on the other hand, it's not our house to burn. It's I think it's up to the kids. Like, what do you think? Are you, are you going to be stuck here if we burn it down? Well, I have their bones. I have they their can bones, follow the so bones. They're with me. Can stay with you forever. Forever, dear. Uh-huh. Did, did, did we say I that? I mean, uh, no. How would, how would it work? I uh, guess I would just bury you. Do you have a, 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 a family grave or anything like that? You have crypts. The basement. My family made it for everybody, but <laughs> tell you what, we if, if we burn down the house, um, we'll be able to see the crypts in the basement, eh? So um, it, let's just uh, let's let's let it a fire, light it a fire. Um, you know, we have plenty of fire making things amidst our party. Um, we need to get out of here. Bad things are happening. Time is stopping. Uh, we're seeing flashes of of other times and uh, women with eyes bleeding and demonic dogs and speaking dead children. Um, you know, it, it's been long enough. They're skeletons. I bet the parents are dead too. I'm sorry, Thorn and Rose. Um, there's there's nothing left for you here. We will give you the best burial that we can, but we need to get the hell out of here. Let's no, go. no. I won't move. All right. And Chief? I hold out Pogger and hand him, I like hold him out. You can take the dog, but I'm going to go get whatever's in the basement. I'm not going to leave her alone. She can't face a fiend by herself. Yeah, none of oh, us can Pogger. face a fiend. There. And and with that, um, I I just say, all right. I'll tell you what. You guys do what you need to do. I'm gonna set this place to fire. If you are in this, if you are in this house, then there's nothing that I can do about it. This is your decision. It's your suicide. And with that, I, I run out of the room and I bolt down the stairs towards the front door, uh, presumably in the dining hall. Correct? As as you hear Cheek's voice still shouting at you not to do this in, in the distance. And and with that, I I just I run up as quickly as possible, and I just bear my shoulder at it, and and just just try and ram right through. Uh, maybe trying to uh, along the way grasp at any sort of door handle that might be there, but uh, but you know, just trying to do whatever I can to get the hell out of this house. Rush with your anger and your rage. That's and, a two. And oh my God. You you hit the front of that door, and. And you actually slipped on what seems to be some scattered clothing from from the wardrobes that are by this entrance, this foyer of sorts. And as you slip, um, <laughs> you fall and you hit your head, and you see the world start blurring uh, as as it fades Ooh. out slightly, and you lose your consciousness. And only because the quite the hit hit on your head, as the last thing you remember was just the the heat of your scars uh, lighting up. I'll, I'll be right behind him, and I'll say, "Oh, pocket!" and I'll smash in the door as well. You also give the the door a, a smash with your your shoulder, but uh, the doors don't seem to budge. Still, still locked. Well, 
I suppose our decision's made for us then. There's always the window that we came in, so... Oh, well, that's true. He didn't just... He had to go knock himself out on the front door. He, he didn't just go through the window that we already broke. At, at this point, Roland, you're, you're getting your vision back to you as you start gently pushing yourself up, but that was kind of a, a nasty slip there on, on your way out as you were angered by the discussion. It's... It's the house. Like we said, it tells people to come, but not to leave. Once you're here, I, I don't think you can leave. We want something from you. We won't let you or us go till they're satisfied. Dazed still from my unconsciousness, and I say, I dreamed we were stuck in a house made of horrors. Now what do we do? <laughs> Despite what the scars told me, um, Maybe, maybe we can burn it down from from the inside. Um, no, so, no, that's a terrible idea, no. Roland. And you can even See. before you even get in there, you can walk over to the doorway that looks into the kitchen and, and peer right at the window, and you notice that the window is not broken anymore. The window's not broken. What do you know? That just means that we get to break it a second time, eh? That just means I, I, I think what that means is we, we got a demon to kill. <laughs> we'll burn it down with the demon, with everything. Who is right, Roland, about the dog speaking demonic things? I still have no evidence. Cheek was right. Cheek? You were right, and then I run back up the stairs. <laughs> uh, you pull that, and a, and a small folded ladder pops out. Uh, and you see uh, mostly kind of dust in the air, a dark darkness above you, uh, but it's just a faint light. There's, it looks like there's a window up there, but from what you see, nothing has fallen on you. You work your way into this attic and you see a fairly small attic space as you're in, in the top of this house. And in the far corner, well illuminated, you see this narrow spiral staircase that seems to descend into the house. I mean, we can't just go in willy-nilly. We need to be careful. Um, but, uh... But, Roland, last time you had an idea, you tried... You sh you <laughs> went unconscious at the door. That's because I wasn't being careful. Perfect. Um, and you descend down the narrow spiral staircase here. The wood creaks loudly under your weight as you move further down, and thick cobwebs start filling up the shaft. Uh, and reduce the visibility in the staircase to even just a few f feet in front of you as you descend below the first level of the house. As you see, the walls down here are carved out of earth, clay, and rock. The tunnel, it leads into just a single tunnel that continues on that's about four feet wide by seven feet high, and you see a few timber braces at regular intervals holding holding the walls together. I'll um, tap my, my mice. And I'll say Svirt and cast light. Great, you do you do just that and, and you have your weapon readied in front of you. It is straight on that looks somewhat like this as you as your gaze just at the very end meets a, a little dull light shining. But by getting there you don't see anything. Unless Clement you did grab a torch in the very beginning. Have have you kinda kept that with you the whole time? Um you guys of course yeah. have other torches on you, but one thing you see below you as you're walking is you see what almost looks like very old human footprints in this earthen floor and they're leading every which way. You notice some roots growing in parts of the walls with all sorts of bugs and, and worms even crawling through, through some parts of it, some falling onto the ground around you. At the very end that you see right now, it seems to open up into a room. And assuming you continue making your way forward with both your dark vision and the, and the torch that's lit, you see what there's this narrow tunnel that opens up into a room that's also carved out of the earth as well. At the foot of the bed, there's this wooden footlocker of sorts, and Cheek and Delphini in the corner of the room with your dark vision, you see something moving ever so slightly. Uh, don't like that at all. Yes. Do you see that, Delphine? Do you, you're seeing that, right? Uh, I do indeed. 
And what you can now clearly see is a wooden chair in the shadows in the corner of this room, and above it, the barely held together remains of a man hanging by a rope, dangling off of a single iron chandelier. By the clothing, and from what you've seen in the portraits, you believe this to be the father of the household. Well, uh, that's just sad. Um, let's get him down. Yeah, and you, you do that, and, and quickly this falls down to the ground as dust kicks up in the air. Uh, kind of the stench of, of dried blood fills your nose um, as, as the dust that's kicked up gives you a small cough. Uh, you look further, and you find a folded note in one of the jacket pockets. And it says, My beloved children, I wish I could do what all fathers do and tell you that monsters aren't real, but it wouldn't be true. Life can create things of exquisite beauty, but it can also twist them into hideous beings. Selfish, violent, grotesque, monstrous. It pains me more than you will ever know to say that your mother has turned into one such monster, inside and out. And I'm afraid the disease that afflicted her mind has taken a hold of me as well. It sickens me to think of what we've put you through. There is so much more I should have done. But there is no excuse. I only ask of you, though I know I do not have the right to do so, to try and forgive us. I despise what your mother has become, but I love and pity her all the same. Rose, I wish I could... I wish I could have seen you blossom into a strong, beautiful woman. Thorn and Walter, I wish I could have been there for you much more than I did. But I can't. I have tried. I'm not sure they'll even let me leave. I wish we could have all gone away from here, far away. But this is the only way. Goodbye. Clement shoulder and red as and well. Clement was even saying it out loud as he traced oh. his way through the, through the note, um, making sure that the kids were... In, in the hallway, you asked them not to enter the room, and, and they, they obliged Ooh. there, thinking you were talking about adult topics, and it wasn't quite for them. Um, so they haven't overheard this. A horrid last note. Mother's no longer human. Pray rest for these kids. Haiku alert! Haiku oh. alert! We definitely need a sound effect. I think it's going to be a pause. So. Yeah, now illuminating the, the full room with your attention at that corner, you can now see in the opposite corner, there is another narrow passageway that continues further into, into the earth itself. And at that point, you see a figure start coming forward out of the shadows, and you hear... And can I ask what a group of strangers is doing in my home? Who are you? And I think that's the mother, Roland. Come no closer, or you'll burn. Uh, who who are you? Uh, what what do you want from us? At, at this moment, the two children begin to look confused, uh, slowly begin to weep, and you actually see them kind of rush back into the opposite hallway again, hiding away from from the sights of this room. And she turns to you. Am I being questioned in my own home right now? Who are you, and what are you doing here? We are here on the orders of uh, your, presumably your children. Uh, are, are you the, the matron of this household? Oh, those bothersome nuisances. And where are, and where are they? And, nowhere. Uh, they're nowhere, they're nowhere. They, they, they were outside. We ran into them and they told us that we needed to help them. Um, what, what, what happened down here? Um, we, we, uh, understand that, um, that something has befallen this house. Uh, we, we see nothing but death here. Death. Death is what you see. I see nothing but life and salvation. And, and once again, you come in here asking what's going on. I, I'm feeling awfully generous right now. If you leave now, I will let you live. I will not repeat myself. We have tried to leave, but the house will not let us. Did you try the door? We did try the door. It did not go well. And did you turn the knob? Sometimes you I, have I to apologize. jiggle the doorknob. Did you try jiggling it a little? 
I, I did everything in my power to get out. Um, is there perhaps through through this uh, this tunnel behind you? Is there another exit that we could possibly use? We we really do want to get out of here. M- may, Miss Lady, I have a question for you. Yes. What do you want to know? Um, where is your baby, Walter? Ah. Well, if you come down this hallway, I think you'll find out about Walter. And at this moment, the voices flood into Roland's head. <laughs> this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. Uh, we, the, the only path forward is to strike at this fiend. Ready yourselves. I, I start putting my thumbs together as I prepare burning hands the heat and and you can see some low flames start emitting from from your the palms of your hands as you see the this tongue uh, from her face slither a little bit more so it is death then would you all kindly roll for initiative thank you so much everyone for watching we will take track of these initiative rolls and next session we're gonna be jumping right into some Mm. awesome combat Um, which might be followed up by some more awesome craziness.